Hello, my name is Thomas O'Neill and I'd like to discuss gravity waves. Specifically, the gravity waves that were measured by the LIGO laser infrarometer at LIGO. There was the very first gravity wave measured was a ten thousandth of the diameter of a proton. And I've come up with a gravity geometric measurement that measures the distance to the actual black hole merger. And the distance they utilize is luminosity. And the distance they use, I believe, is a little long. And the distance I use is a little shorter. So let me just read this right now. I finally found another gravity wave measurement measured against the diameter of a proton. The first gravity wave found was GW15914 measured at a tenth of a diameter of a proton. It had a spin of 0 0.01 and so in my Python code it would have a spin of 1. I should explain the luminosity distance is an approximation in linear direction because light bends around massive objects on its way from deep space to the measuring point. At some junctures, light can bend greater than other junctures because of mass differences, and this is why it's an approximation for deep objects. Oftentimes, luminosity will be printed like this, 5300 plus 2400 minus 2600. So to find the total light years, you would multiply a million by 3.26 parsecs times 5300 plus 2400 minus 2600 light years. That would give you the distance. Now, my gravity geometric I will be showing to you in a Python code that I designed is has to do with pi and I'll show you later but I, I came to two measurements <coughs> that were against I found the, the the measurements online in the news articles one was the very first LIGO detection had a one in ten thousandth the width of a proton and then there there was Another measurement they did on May 21st, 2019, which was a millionth of the diameter of a proton. I was desperately searching the net to see if my gravity geometry was correct. I finally stumbled on an article regarding the gravity wave of GW19521 measured a millionth of a diameter of a proton. I then looked at the spin for the calculation of GW19521 and it was 0 0.08, so on my Python code it would be a it would have a spin of 8, which is also plays a role in the calculation. This was great that I found the measurements to test my gravity geometric to see how I, it fared against the approximate luminosity distance measuring stick. And just as I imagined, at greater distances, the smaller luminosity is, as an approximation, increases with time because light bends around other massive objects on its way to where it's being measured. On the other hand, gravity takes a straight path to the target being measured at a hindered by mass, so this is why I'm excited to show the result. I'm not, I'm not using luminosity to show distance, and perhaps, as I just discussed, light not being accurate, that I'm spot on for light years in my geometric result. So here you go. These are two measurements I made with the luminosity versus my geometric. Now, as you can see, the... Um, Here's the gravitational constant, and here's my uh, g exponential growth. Here's my gravity's geometry for the first calculation. LIGO's distance approximation for luminosity in light years is uh, a billion two hundred seventy-one million four hundred thousand light years, whereas my distance is a billion two hundred sixty-two million five hundred ninety nine thousand five hundred seventy one point four light years using a gravity geometric I don't use luminosity at all to measure the light year distances it had a difference of eight million eight hundred thousand four hundred twenty eight point five light year di uh, difference in light years so that was the very first uh, gravity wave measured and it was a tenth of uh, a ten thousandth of a width of a proton and it has a spin of one so I'll be showing you inside my program how this works
Here's 410 for 160 and 180. This is the uh, luminosity calculations. Now for the, uh, the distant uh, uh, other black hole uh, merger or black hole that they measured in May 19th of uh, 2019 or September, I believe. Uh, this this was 16 billion 626 million light years, and I, with my gravity geometric, I measured it at 15 billion 782 million 492,643.1 light years. And so this is the program right here, and I will go over the program now. But before I do that, let's let's get in touch with why luminosity is an approximation. So if we go in here, to at all estimate an approximation calculation or judgment of the value of number or quantity or some extent of something. That's the definition of estimate: an approximation calculation or judgment of the value. If you look at the steps in calculating distance through brightness and luminosity, check step four. This is where the approximation is made. So in step four, they say, since 4 pi is approximately 10, this is d2 equals 10 divided by 1, m2. So let's read this. Astronomers estimate, so they estimate the distance of nearby objects in space by using a method called stellar parallax, a trigonom trigonometric Parallax. Simply put, they measure a star's apparent movement against the background of more distant stars as Earth revolves around the Sun. Cosmic distances, parallax is an important rung in the cosmic distance ladder. By measuring distance to number of nearby stars, astronomers have been able to establish relationships between a star's color and its intrinsic brightness. For example, the brightness it would appear to be through from standard distance. These stars become standard candles. If a star is too far away to measure its parallax, astronomers can match the color and spectrum of one of the standard candles and determine its intrinsic brightness, Reed said. Comparing its brightness, we can get a good measure of distance by applying this little formula, 1 divided by r uh, squared 2 rule. So it is an estimate. Luminosity and brightness is an estimate. And why I'm so excited about my gravity geometric is it's it's consistent on on how I, I measure things using the gravity wave that they provide for me from LIGO. Um, it is under the estimate of the luminosity distance in both occurrences. Um, this one was under it by eight eight million eight hundred thousand four hundred twenty eight light years for the first gravitational wave measurement which was a ten thousandth of a um, proton's width and the second one was a millionth of a of a proton width and that was 16 billion light years but the difference was 843,000 or 843 million light years and the other one was eight eight million around there so now let's open up my program we'll open up the program to show you how to use it so let's take for instance um, so here's here is here's well, I'll read it to you two to the power of exponential growth of gravity's constant G multiplied by fine structure constant multiplied by 12 hours divided by n so if we take enter the number to divide the proton by and a proton is something like uh, 10 to the negative 15. That's the uh, diameter of a proton. So if we divide the diameter of a proton, let's go divide it by 10,000. That was the first measurement at LIGO for the first uh, gravity wave in September 14th of, I believe, 2014. September or so about six years ago this is 2021 right now so we take 10,000 and divide it into the proton the spin was one and I'll show you where I get those figures at spin was one then we take the luminosity distance which was 410 
and then um, we get uh, I believe it was 180 and then uh, then we take the negative subtract the part of x is 160 then we get no I did it wrong let's do this over again 10,000 it was actually it should have been the add part of x should have been 160 so 10,000 we get spin of 1 then we get 160 and 180 oh. I'm sorry I'm gonna run the code over making some mistakes here it's kinda dark okay let's try this again 10,000 spin is 1 parsecs is 410 to start with 160 is to add the parsecs to subtract the parsecs is 180 okay yeah this was the first gravity wave measurement and here here is the actual luminosity approximation as I just showed you why it's an approximation in the definition it's an estimate this is my gravity wave geometric and here's the gravity's geometry and notice how it looks like 2 pi but it's barely over it and here's the exponential growth of the the figure and here's the gravity's constant so this is uh, about 8,800,428.5 light years 8,800,428.5 light years less than the luminosity distance and so what I'm thinking is I might be dead on or this might not be an approximation due to I'm using the gravity waves measurement in my calculation and I could be spot on for the actual distance which would be really great so let's try another one let's try the um, the the very distant gravity wave measurement so let's this one is at a million so we'll take a million and that number is a million the spin is 8 so we'll go to spin is 8 uh, 8 and then 5300 is the actual and uh, so 5300 then we do 2400 I believe and then 2600 and there we go <clears throat> once again we have another LIGO distant approximation of luminosity and you'll notice it's, a, it's, a, it's always going to be approximation because look they got zeros on the end if it was a, a, an actual a, a distant measurement it would have zeros on the end so it's 16 billion 626 million light years Whereas my uh, distant measurement is 15,782,494,643.1 light years. The difference of 843 million light years. So my gravity is geometric. Now the gravity is geometric changed because, you know, gravity uh, is warp space time is different for different gravity waves and different energies. This looks just like 2 pi, which is for this distance. And here's the exponential growth on this one is 2. So, and you're probably wondering, well, this looks bigger than the actual age of the universe. Well, the universe expanded to 92 billion years, uh, light years. Uh, you can look that up. Um, we only see the visible light. This is energy measured from gravity's waves in luminosities it's the energy revealed from it and um, so we can only see from the cosmic background radiation 13.8 billion light years but the universe is actually bigger because um, the time it took the light year that we actually see took 13 billion light and that's as far as we can see but um, time has actually been moving along in this universe a lot longer than that so it's been moving for about 92 billion years it was what they estimated at so the universe is actually larger 
and therefore we have this figure so this is okay and um, so that's that but let me go into the actual list and show you more on those figures where I got the eight and the one spins so we go into the list here is the point zero eight and this up here for the very first gravity wave is a, there's a one so it's it's from effective spin so it's a dimension of in spiral parameter and that's where I'm getting that for the calculation and um, so uh, and if we read more um, I'll have you look at the program a little bit if you like. And you can see the figures. The here is the fine structure constant in it. This is twelve hours divided by n, whichever um, the actual number to divide the uh, uh, proton by, like if this was a million or ten thousand, you divide time by that. This is 12 hours, the average um, hours of daylight on Earth. I came up with that figure. And this is, the this is the gravity's constant right here. And this is the exponential growth constant, which I came up with time. Time is the fourth dimension. And uh, so I'm using exponential growth, which is part of the fourth dimension. And that is the G. That's where I'm getting that. And then I'm getting gravity's ge geometry which is g times uh, pi and so it's in this equation right here um, there's g right there and there's the gravity wave which is being measured and then there's seconds which is this is 24 hours right here which is a day times 365 which is a year so that's part of the light, the light year calculation and this right here is the meters in a year so this this equals one light year right here in meters and this is g divided by two and this is gravity's geometry so this this is what's calculating the light years for my uh, and as you can see I'm not using luminosity to calculate light years whereas right here this is the parsec this is luminosity gravity measurement but which LIGOS is depending on and I have sent it to the LIGO people um, for the, the calculation so that they can look it over the uh, mathematics that's involved in my calculation. Um, so that's this is the program. If you'd like to copy it down, I don't know if you'd see that, but you can probably barely see it in my video. Um, I can show you probably better in here the actual code so I'll show you the, the code and I'll I'll, min I'll, uh, I'll I'll take the code down so you can you can fit it in here in the video so I'll show you the code in the video so that's that and that's that so if you paused it you can type in all the code you want and then you'll have the code as well so that you can calculate uh, the gravity's geometric as well um, you know going back to uh, Graham Hancock, which I've been posting my stuff on, GrahamHancock.com, which is a forum. Um, let's go to here in science. Um, how can I find gravity's wave measurements? I'm coffee, by the way, that's my uh, handle. How can I find out the gravity wave measurements that only relate to diameter proton? I was searching for that second measurement, which was a millionth of a diameter, to, to verify my gravity geometric. But this is the, this is where it all came out of this book called The Universe's Primary Number, and it's at Amazon if you want to get it. Um, 
it's it's in my calculation is in the book and it also has the daylight the average daylight hours calculated through pi um, it has the universe's uh, hydrogen which is about 73 mass of the universe is in hydrogen calculated from pi and a bunch of other things find structure constant everything is calculated from pi so it's a book I wrote called the universe's primary number and here's the cover if you want to pick that up from Amazon it's a plug for me <laughs> but um, anyway right here the, the use of a gravity geometric versus luminosity to measure distant objects and we just went over that all this and the use of gravity we just went over the luminosity is an approximation we know that and so for those who are confused by large numbers which seems to be older than the universe it's hard for me to explain but we are just looking back as far as we can see with light years yet the universe has been expanding longer than the visible light gravity waves energy real time periods before visible light and that's how I speculate I estimate the luminosity distance I imagined at present the current universe has inflated to 92 billion light years therefore these numbers below are okay these numbers are are, are 16 billion light years and 15.7 light years so how inflation is changing the mystery and this is a quote it's 92 billion light years in space.com so it verifies that and um, so yes um, my gravity geometric seems to be I believe is accurate for the distance of an object not a, an, a, an not an estimate or an approximation and this is why I brought this video to YouTube and, and, and hopefully you're listening and that these gravity waves right here since they travel the speed of light and since mass does not affect their path towards the measuring person that they're accurate they're not um, obstructed by the formulas of man and the uh, other massive objects in space which cause the bending of light so thank you very much and have a good day